y'all ready? Y'all ready to be our next comedian? I said, are y'all ready to be our next comedian? All right, I want y'all to put y'all hands together and give a warm welcome to Johnny Aaron. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, it's your friend, it's your fellow fucker, it's Johnny Erez, everybody, and welcome. Welcome back to another edition of the train wreck that we call the Views from the John podcast. And I am your host, Johnny Erez. Welcome to the show. I'm just checking in on you to see how the fuck your week is going. All right, let's dive into some nonsense. Uh, If you listened to the last podcast uh, entitled Best, Worst, Firsts, Sex and Drugs, if you made it uh, past the first, uh, I don't know, 27 minutes, you might notice all of a sudden there's static. And then with like five minutes or six minutes left to go in the podcast, the static goes away. And that's something that used to occasionally pop up in my early podcast. And I couldn't figure out what was causing static on the, you know, on the recording. And it turns out that in this studio, I don't know if this is like this anywhere else but this one, but anything that's Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or cellular, anything wireless causes that static. So that's one of the first rules I have anytime I do a cast or I have a guest on. Everything wireless or anything wireless, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cell, whatever, it's got to come off, right? So Mark's second time on the show. He knew this, right? We we went over it in pre-production. And then uh, the dude uh, we uh, has... Uh, has these little microscopic uh, hearing aids inside of his ears. And evidently, uh, at about 27 minutes or whatever it is into the podcast, he decided to uh, turn them on or adjust them or something. And they're controlled through Bluetooth. And uh, it's his Bluetooth signal that are in his ears from his hearing aids that caused the static on the recording. And then if you notice, right around the time that he says, okay, it's time to wrap it up, is right when he turned off his... <laughs> right when he goes to turn off his... Uh, um, whatever the fuck they're called. The things in your ears that help you hear. Hearing aids. Right when he goes to turn off his hearing aids, and then he goes, yep, time to go. So, so yes, that's hearing aids bluetooth hearing aids is what caused the static to screw up and we don't hear that when we're recording so you know we record he goes home i listen to like the first 25 minutes of the podcast and i'm like cool you know i edit it all together blah 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 it wasn't until i released it to all the formats and then listened back to the entire show that i found that uh that happened and then i'm like what the fuck caused that and then uh, I texted him, and I'm like, yo, did you happen to turn your cell phone on, or did something? Did you turn something on halfway through the show? He's like, oh, fuck, I think I was adjusting my, uh, uh, you know, the volume on my hearing aids or some shit. And I was like, and, and he's like, they're Bluetooth. And I'm like, oh, shit, that was it. So, yeah, it's still listenable, and, you know, I've listened to the show a couple times just because even though we're doing the show, nothing's scripted. It's pretty obvious, right? The show's not scripted based on how horrible it is. So yeah, you know, we I record a podcast and I don't even remember what the frig I talk about. So, you know, it is kind of fun to listen back to a show that I do, you know, a day later or an hour later, just because I forget what I talk about. And for a minute, I pretend it's even me doing it. And then I'm like, oh, who the fuck is this guy? He's pretty funny. And then I'm just like, oh, shit, it's me. Ugh, I wish everyone thought like I did, right? If everyone thought the way you did, sir or ma'am, listening, right? The world would be a better place if, <laughs> if we all just agreed with each other, right? Sorry, I know some people can't stand the fucking slurping of the coffee. I can't help it. It's hot, you know? When you have super hot coffee, sir or ma'am, 
See, I don't know if you're a sir or ma'am listening. So I just, okay? So when I address you, I'll just say they. All right, so let's 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 dive into some craziness, shall we? Let's talk about Donald Trump showing up to the Daytona 500. <laughs> Am I the only person that thinks this guy's just fucking out of his mind? Now, granted, okay, I I have people that listen to this show and they hear me talk shit about Trump and they're like, "You're a liberal. You're a leftist." And I'm just like, "No." I'm not. I just, I was, I, since I was a kid, just common sense was just like rhetorically beaten into me by my father, you know? And it's just, you cannot argue that the guy acts like a fucking idiot, dude. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I've talked about this before in the podcast, but I have to do it again to try to explain to you idiots out there that hear me talk shit about Trump and instantly think I'm a liberal or a leftist. No. <laughs> have you have you seen the guy on a stage and just examined him in like how he carries himself? I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you want to see how a real president is supposed to act especially when he's on camera or just doing anything presidential. Look at fucking Barack Obama. If that guy didn't just look like a president should and act, especially when he's at a podium, I don't know who did, okay? That's, wh that's why I loved Obama. The guy just looked and acted the part of a respectable human friggin' president, right? And then we got this complete failed reality start idiot that we somehow elected to run the country and i will be the first to admit okay because i'm not left and i'm not right that trump or his administration or the people that actually do the work in the background have done some good things behind the scenes with the economy and the shit like that but in terms of this the guy's personality and how he acts we knew he was a douchebag 15, 20 years before he got elected to even run for president, okay? The dude hasn't changed. He's, a, he's like the ultimate shit talker because he knows that nobody can actually fuck with him, right? Because he's got 25,000 fucking uh, bodyguards around him, whatever they're called, this, the fucking secret. Why do they call it the secret service? Everyone knows it's a service. It's not a secret, is it? Is it really a secret you know, why are they called this? Why aren't they called like the presidential guard? What, because Saddam Hussein has uh, had a presidential guard or that's what he referred to his army as? Why are they called the secret service? No, it's not a fucking secret, is it? But, but like literally, I've explained this before and I can't say this is an original idea, but you know, the only way I can compare Trump and the way he acts is like a lady. Or somebody that just knows that you aren't going to, like, hit them. Like, somebody who's just able to talk and talk crazy shit but knows that there's just zero repercussions to whatever they're saying. So I would compare it. Like, I would never and I have never laid my hands on a lady. But, gentlemen, if you're listening, you've probably had a lady get really upset at you and talk a lot of shit and get up in your face and maybe even hit you fully well knowing that you're not going to hit them back. You know what I'm saying? So they can be really aggressive. And this is the only thing I can do to compare it to, to like, fucking Donald, man. The guy just gets up there and acts like a fucking idiot because he knows that he's like the fucking president. No one's going to slap him, right? No one's going to punch the guy or anything like that because the guy's got 50,000 bodyguards around him so he can just say and do the craziest shit. But at the same time, there are certain people that, like, get excited when he's up on a stage like, yeah, look at Donald making America fucking great again, you know? You know, with the fucking MAGA hats, dude. And, yeah, Donald, he's so fucking American. He's so American that he comes to the Daytona 500. <laughs> and this is what it... Fucking... Dude, okay, I don't know because I'm full of uninformedness, okay? And this is half of what makes me laugh at myself is because, you know, y you know, I get triggered on misinformation and then I go on these rants. But, you know, I do them for, you know, for fun, okay? But seriously, has there ever been a president that has, like, just rolled up to the fucking Daytona 500? And, you know, I don't, I, I'm sorry, 
this is, you know, I'm a comedian, so don't take everything I say at face value. But, uh, you know, isn't it kind of like uh, just a well-known fact that the Daytona 500 is like uh, Christmas Day for uh, white trash? <laughs> right? Uh, you know, I don't know a whole lot of educated people with all their teeth that watch the Daytona 500. Now, I know there's always exceptions to the rule, right? But, like, didn't... I think I I might be wrong here, but didn't Trump like just narrowly kind of win because he really like got like all the uneducated white racist bigoted fucking idiots from the southern states to like I've never voted before, but I'm gonna vote for this dude because he's so fucking American and racist. I can identify with that, you know. I think that's how he, like, he went after the completely uneducated, complete fucking methed out idiots, right? And, and like, got that little demographic, and that's what, like, pushed him, like, a little bit over the edge to win the election. So, so yeah, Trump rolls up to the fucking Daytona 500, which I just think is hilarious, right? It, in and of itself, because I think... Like, even if he hadn't shown up, I would say, you know, there would be 90% of the people in the crowds at the Daytona 500 probably have hats on. And half of the, you know, and maybe like, you know, 10% of the hats say, you know, Dale Earnhardt Jr. on it or whoever the fuck races, Dick Trickle, fucking Cole Trickle, fucking, you know, Rowdy, Rowdy, fucking Smith, whatever the fuck these guys' names are, right? They all have fucking crazy redneck names, right? And then fucking, you know, and then the rest are probably fucking MAGA hats. Make, make America great again. And then, oh boy, the Donald shows up to the fucking NASCAR. Dude, Donald, so not only did Donald just go to the D D Daytona 500, which is like the redneck fucking World Series, but he stays in his limousine and does a rap, a lap around the track. So here's the presidential limousine and, like, all the frickin', you know, like, SWAT teams, like, doing a lap around the Daytona 500, and the crowd's going nuts, like, yeah, woo-hoo-hoo, -hoo. hey, Donnie, you're going to the beer tent, get me another Budweiser, we gotta crack one for Donald, holy shit, is that, if that isn't the most fucking redneck thing I've ever seen a president do, I don't know <laughs> Trump. Uh, what's next? You're going allergy, fucking allergating, allergate, all the, 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 what, what, what's next, dude? Alligator wrestling for Trump? He's, he's gonna go catch some fucking catfish with his fucking, uh, elbow or some shit? Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck. You know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about the word goddamn. Ooh, any Christians listening? I'm a Christian, and I just said it. But why am I saying it? I don't think it should be blasphemous. Right? Isn't God, isn't saying God damn or using the Lord's name in vain like one of the deadly sins? Or, you know, now that I've said it, I'm going to somehow go to hell. You know, I was thinking about this the other night because I God damned something. I said, God damn you. And that's just the thing. That's why I don't think it should be blasphemous. Because when I say God damn, I'm not saying God damn you. I'm damning whatever the fucking thing is that I'm trying to do, right? You guys with me? Like last night, you know, like I'm trying to fucking screw in a screw. And the screw just ain't going in the fucking hole. So I'm like, God damn fucking thing, right? I'm not damning God. I'm saying God Damn this fucking screw that won't screw into the fucking whole goddamn fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't fucking damning God. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe the Christian religion needs to lighten its grip up on the, uh, you know, how serious it is. Because, I, I don't know, I would think that an entity as just amazing and as all-knowing as God would understand that when I say, God damn you, you, you piece of shit fucking vacuum, right? That I'm not saying, God, damn you for this vacuum. I'm saying, God, damn this fucking vacuum. Damn this vacuum, God. You see this shit? You see what this vacuum is doing? Damn this fucking thing, won't you? 
Help a brother out! Right? So that's all I'm doing. That's all we're doing, right? I'm not saying, damn you, God. I'm saying, damn whatever this fucking thing is that ain't, you know, jiving with me. All right. Speaking of vacuum cleaners, bro. I spend a lot of time on YouTube. I love YouTube. I really do. I, I don't know about you guys, but I love fucking YouTube. I know more people. There's even people that are like, you know, like, uh, could be my father's age that don't even watch cable anymore. They just watch YouTube. And I, I tend to watch YouTube now more than I watch TV. And uh, somebody was asking me the other day why I watch so much YouTube. And I'm like, have you not been on there? You know, you don't have to wait for fucking Jerry Springer to come on. You know, you know, if you want to watch a video of a shark getting eaten by a refrigerator, it, you know, it's on YouTube. Anything you've ever wanted to watch, it's on fucking YouTube. Okay? Except me. Actually, you can find me on YouTube. People haven't deduced that by now. I'm not just a young comic, but I'm also a seasoned musician. And if you look for the band Grimlock, there are several bands over the years that have taken the name Grimlock uh, because we never trademarked it. Uh, we never copyrighted it. I don't think we could have ever trademarked it or copyrighted it because we named the band after a Transformer. And if you're not from the 80s, I guess you don't know what Transformers were. But they were the shit. They still are the shit. You've probably seen the movie Transformers, right? Those Transformers uh, figures came out in the 80s or whatever. And they were huge. And the singer, Johnny, John Cimino, fucking loved the fucking Transformer. And he loved, most specifically, the Grimlock. And, uh, you know, even if you didn't know that Grimlock was a Transformer, it just sounded like a cool band name, didn't it? Like Grim, like, you know, like Grimacing, you know, and then like Lock, like you're locked in like a Grimlock, you know? So, yes, I was in the original Boston hardcore band that formed in about 1994, okay? And then we teetered on till about 98, 99, 2000, then we got back together in 01 to like 03, and, uh, yeah, even though we haven't been a band in almost 20 years, uh, we have a record label, Knives Out. You might have even heard there was a movie out recently called Knives Out. Isn't the... That, that's that's not our record label, but it's, yeah, it's Knives Out. The dude, great fucking dude. Of course, I'm going to not remember his name off the top of my fucking head, which is awful. See, this is what happens, dude. When you press me on the spot for information, my mind just goes blank. You know what? I'm going to share an embarrassing uh, story with you guys for a second. Um, and that's what I'm going to start. I'm going to start embarrassing the hell out of myself, man. I'm a freaking idiot if you haven't been able to tell already. So I'm just going to freaking roast myself on this show, right? People people love to be made fun of, right, as long as it ain't them. So I'm just going to make fun of myself. This is honest God's truth. So uh, the last show I did, like a show show, not a... Not a, like, three-quarter show or a half show, like an open mic show, like open mic comedy. Uh, my last show show, which was, you know, people had to pay 15, 20 bucks, whatever it was, to get in. Uh, but uh, anyways, that show I did a guest spot on at the Thrill Mill, uh, like a month ago or six weeks ago, whatever many weeks ago it was. Um, I got to be truthful with you guys. Um, you know, that was one of my first, you know, bigger, you know, paying shows where it wasn't just uh, come watch these comedians if you feel like it. This was a, you know, you got to pay to get in to watch me. And, um, you know, I got introduced. I got called up on stage. I went out there, shook hands with the comic and said, keep it going. And I thanked him for bringing me up and all that stuff, just like you're supposed to do. And then... Uh, I said something like so into the microphone or how you doing and then I just blanked out <laughs> and uh, if one day that recording I have it recorded both the audio and the video and maybe one day I don't know 10 20 years from now if I ever become a huge comic maybe I'll fucking release that shit so you guys can just see how far I've come but uh, yeah I I I was introduced. I got the microphone. I think I might have said hello or what's up, and then I just literally my mind went blank. I could not think of a single joke. I couldn't think of my act. I already had like a like a five minute or so set, uh, uh, you know, uh, t like a couple longer jokes, a couple shorter jokes, and uh, my mind just went blank. It just for the first twenty seconds, I was just like, uh, so. Uh, 
uh, the, uh, and I'm just like, oh my God, I cannot believe I can't think of my act. But it's this, you know, classic example. You ever heard the expression deer in the headlights? Well, that's a real expression. It ain't like the nothing to sneeze at one. I did a joke the other night about that. Some people, most people I think have heard of that saying, but I was like, yo, you know, let, like the whole saying, you want to have your cake and eat it too. Well, who the fuck doesn't want to have a cake and be able to eat it? Has anyone ever baked you a fucking cake and then just like taken a... Nope. You can have your cake, but you can't fucking eat it. You know? And then I was thinking about the whole expression, nothing to sneeze at. Like, have you ever... I've heard that expression multiple times in my youth. Hey, that ain't nothing to sneeze at. And I was thinking, what do you mean it's nothing to sneeze at? Have you ever sneezed at something in disapproval? Like somebody says, hey, you want to go see that new Avengers movie? And you're like, achoo, achoo, achoo. You're like, bro, 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 the movie. It ain't nothing to sneeze at, you know? Um, and why? But yeah, the whole deer in the headlights, that's a real fucking thing. They actually have laws against that. There are people, uh, there are hunters out there that cheat. And they'll take flashlights and shit. Or they'll be, you know, driving through their fucking backwoods and shit with a, you know, like with a gun on their lap and a beer, wa and a fucking beer too, right? And, uh, you know, all of a sudden they'll come around a corner and their headlights hit a deer. And the deer literally freeze in the bright light for like two seconds. And then that gives the hunter an unfair advantage to then have a, you know, a target that's not moving. And then they fucking kill Bambi, right? And it's a fucking horror story. All these hunters out there killing Bambi, you know? Just just, just picture it, right? You got fucking Bambi. This cute, innocent, little, doe-eyed, leaf-eating deer. And it's putting its, it's putting its little deer lips down to the cool, the cool, crisp, clear water. Taking a little sip. Then, bang! A fucking bullet goes right through its head. Now, I want to ask you. Would you care what the motherfucker was wearing? <laughs> if you guys don't know what movie that's from, I didn't invent that. But yeah, the whole deer in the headlights. That's a saying and it's a real thing. If you flash a bright light at a deer in the dark, the shit just freezes for like five seconds like it's a fucking statue. And then it just starts taking off. So yeah, it's an unfair advantage. As if it isn't unfair enough if you're walking through the woods with a bow and arrow or a shotgun. As if a deer can defend itself against that. You're going to take it to the next level and shine a fucking flashlight in its eyes? You fucking pussy hunting fucks. You know what I'm saying? As if a deer has got any fight in it against a human being with a bow and arrow or a fucking gun. You're going to shine a light in its face too. Why don't you kick it in the nuts first while you're at it? You know, <laughs> fucking sadistic fucks, dude. I got nothing against hunters or hunting, but the people that take it to that level, you know? Why don't you, why don't, okay, why don't hunters go out in the woods and just hunt with their bare hands? At least that's a fair fight. If you can go into the woods and come back with a deer just using your bare hands, then I'll say, y y you go eat that deer, boy, you know? If you can choke out a deer and sneak up on it and shit. But man, level the fucking playing field. You know, there aren't deer out in the woods carrying around fucking AK-47s and bow and arrows. Would the hunters go into the woods then if they had to hunt armed deer? <laughs> can you imagine that shit? How many hunters, how many of you hunters listening to this would go out into the fucking woods if those deer were armed? Would you go out there? They'd have to go out there in bulletproof vests and shit like that, you know? But goddamn, how lazy do you have to be to go out in the woods and, like, kick a deer in the nuts and, sh you know, fucking drown it and then you shoot it? Like, how fucking sadistic do you have to be? As if it is, you know? Has it gotten that boring for all you Trump-supporting, shotgun-toting, Bambi-killing fucks out there? Is that... Is has it gotten too boring just shooting the deer with a shotgun that you got to choke it out, kick it in the nuts, fuck it in the ass, and <laughs> then you got to fucking blind it to be able to shoot it? Oh, Jesus. So, yeah, I think Trump going to the Daytona 500 and taking a lap around that track was, like, just, just another head shaking, like, only the Donald. 
Only fucking Trump would go take a victory lap. Oh, around the Daytona 500. What a dude. What a dude. Um, but yeah, speaking of vacuums, bro. Speaking of fucking vacuums. When I was on YouTube the other day, there was a video I came across. In the title, the title really caught my eye, right? The title. The title of it was Vacuuming the Ocean. And it... I'm a comedian, or at least I try to be. So when I hear the title Vacuuming the Ocean, I get it. I know there's like special apparatuses floating through the ocean cleaning out the water. But I'm just thinking to myself, I'm just picturing just this this like giant like uh, space balls uh, fucking vacuum that's like literally like in the ocean, like a like an old school 80s vacuum that's like vacuuming the ocean floor. And then I'm thinking to myself, like vacuuming the ocean? You can't get people to vacuum their own carpet in, the, in, in, a, in like we're vacuuming the ocean. And it just goes to show, have we really fucked this planet up that bad to the point that we have to now vacuum the ocean? You know what I'm saying? Have we really thrown that much shit into our oceans? The only planet we got that we have to vacuum it now. What's next? We're going to sweep it. We're going to sweep the ocean. You know, we're going to hose off the ocean. Then we're going to repaint it. That's what it's coming to, man. Isn't, isn't, I could be completely wrong about this, but if I am, don't blame me because I'm wrong about most things I say, okay? This isn't, if you're coming here for your local news, well, you know, I probably give you the news probably more accurately than the news does. You know, they're probably even more misinformed than I am. At least I'm telling the truth. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, what the fuck was I just talking about? Here's a, here's a classic old man moment. A classic boomer moment, even though I'm not a boomer. <sighs> and I don't dress like one, but man, you can see it in my face. I'm getting old. Uh, yeah, vacuum in the ocean, sweep in the ocean, paint in the ocean. What the fuck? Ocean, uh, oceans. Uh, yeah, so yeah, isn't that fucking crazy? We're vacuuming the ocean. Like, holy shit. Oh yeah, okay, Trump. Isn't Trump the one that says that uh, global warming or whatever is uh, like fake? Is he the guy that says that? That global warming doesn't exist or some shit? That it's a, <laughs> that it's a lie? That ranks right up there to me as somebody saying that the earth is flat. It's like, no, it's not. There are certain things that can be taken for interpretation, right? And there are certain things that just can't, okay? We're not all going to agree that, um, you know, that we should be hunting Bambi, right? There's going to be people out there that think hunting's great people that don't give a shit, and people that think it's wrong. And then you're going to have the extremists that are going to be like, we're going to hunt them deer no matter what the fuck you say. And then you got the people that are way over on the other side that like want to like kill the people who are killing deers, but they don't see the hypocrisy in wanting to kill one group because they're killing another. Right? So, whatever. So, but anyways, that kind of shit can be argued, Right? But when we're talking about global warming or if the earth is flat or round, how much of a fucking moron do you have to be? Look at the science of it, okay? The planet is definitely getting warmer. So when they say global warming, yeah. It's, you know, people, dude, it's, some people, it didn't feel warm out today. So I don't think the world's heating up because it was cold today. <laughs> no, bro. The fucking polar ice caps are melting. It's fucking colder over the North and South Pole. And all the icebergs and shit are melting. And what happens when that happens? Anybody ever seen uh, any educational shows on this shit? You know? When there's all the icebergs, think about all the ice that's on the on the poles, right? That's fresh water. That isn't frozen seawater. And what happens when you introduce too much fresh water or too much cold water or hot water in uh, like the Atlantic or the Pacific? The oceans control our weather, people. 
and when you get a instabilization of the uh, amount of salt water that's in the ocean, that's what causes these giant friggin' storms and, you know, 20, uh, you know, uh, category 20 fucking hurricanes and shit. Look it up. It's science. I ain't saying this from any other point of view than just common, known scientific facts. So to say that global warming is a lie or doesn't exist is as ridiculous to me as you telling, uh, you know, saying that the earth is fucking flat, bro. Or that, uh, you know, there's not a fucking driveway out in front of my house. There is. It's right there. Like, how can you argue it? You know, how can you not? I don't fucking know. But it's just crazy to me, dude, that we're that we've fucked up this planet to the point that we have to like vacuum the ocean like it's a fucking carpet. Holy shit! Now I'm sure you people have seen this. I I had I've I've thought about this every time I've blown past this show on TV, and I'm and I'm gonna finally talk about it. But just based on the name of the program, right? Who? Who watches this show? And who would want to watch it even based on the name of it? But I've heard somebody, somebody recently said that they like watched it and now they're addicted to it. And I'm just like, oh my God, no, you're not. Um, Dr. Pimple fucking Popper, dude. Okay. I've seen, I've seen the trailer for it or the previews for it or whatever, because it's on the Discovery Channel or the Health Channel, whatever fucking channel it's on. But I mean... Isn't it about a doctor who pops pimples? Have you ever seen a pimple pop? I don't get it, bro. Why would you want to watch a doctor pop somebody's pimples? That's all this show is about. It's about watching people get their nasty ass, like, back zit that's the size of a fucking pancake popped while there's a gallon of white, white liquid that squirts out of it onto the TV screen. I'm addicted to it. I love it. I love watching a doctor pop zits on a dude's back. <laughs> like, are you... Like, I want to be in the room at that, uh, at the Discovery Channel headquarters for that fucking sales pitch. So, anybody got any new good ideas for uh, a reality television show? Yes, you in the back. Yeah, I think we should do a show where we take a doctor that specializes in popping pimples and we'll record it and put it on the TV. <laughs> I don't get it, dude. Just like the dude, uh, what is it, Kings of Pain? I talked about that back in the fall. These dudes that were just going out and just like purposely letting snakes and like tarantula wasps bite them and shit. Really? How much money would it take you, dude, to get, you know, to go get bitten by a poisonous snake or fucking insect, you know, and just put it on TV? I mean, seriously, people, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, you canceled, uh, you know, this show or that show, but somehow a doctor popping pimples is on, like, season number four, you know, <laughs> like, some, sh <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. All right, um, I have a dilemma, people. I don't know what to do. For the first time in my life, I don't know what to do. I don't have the courage to figure out a decision. I don't know what to do, and I'm I uh, I am I am I am dreading this decision. I am dreading it because I've worked with these people. I've been one of them, and I've been on the other side of the table, and I know how sleazy they are but fucking car salesmen, okay? Um, one of these days, I should probably sit down and calculate out, since I've been 16 years old and I'm now 41, I've probably owned in excess of 30 cars, okay? So I have purchased over 30 cars in a, what, 25, 26-year span. And... That's just purchasing cars. Never mind how many different cars I tried to buy, but we couldn't come to any sort of agreement. So I've literally taken hundreds upon hundreds of trips to dealerships and dealt with every kind of salesman under the sun. And I've worked uh, at pretty much every position in a car dealer with the except of being that I've never been a general sales manager. I've never been a sales manager. 
I was a manager of the BDC, which is a, a business development uh, group, whatever the fuck they call it, uh, for a dealership. Um, I've worked in the parts department. I've worked in the service department. And I've done car sales. And I cannot tell you, I my hatred for car salesmen is just through the roof. I know they're just human beings because I did it and I'm human. At least I think I am. Sometimes they wake up and I feel more like, uh, you know, I'm a refrigerator. But today I'm identifying as a human. So d d anyways, so yeah, car just the the sleazy, the sleazeball aspect of just the car salesman, just that whole, that whole thing is just... You know, I've studied it. It's like it's like keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. And because car salespeople in just the whole process is just, I feel like I'm just being repeatedly just raped. You know, just it, 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 and honest to God, dude, I just I have fucking no patience for it. If you want to talk about some overly privileged uh, white triggered dude. I'm that dude when I go into a fucking car sale. I mean, dude, seriously, from the moment I see that salesperson walking across the lot with that stupid fucking grin on his face, like rubbing his hands together, like, hmm, how are we going to fuck this guy today? I, I, I just instantly, like my asshole fucking puckers, and I just get raged out. And then the first line, so what's it going to take to put you in this car today? You know, and I, I, I just want to take that fucking salesperson's head and just take it and just wham right into the fucking hood and be like, listen, buddy, this is what I'm, you know, dude, I even try to be nice. I even try to be nice. I sit down with the salesperson before he's even had a chance to give me his first jackass line and be like, bro, I've done this more than any customer you've ever had in your life. I know how the system works. I know what I want. I don't need to fucking test drive it. I know every back story there is to how you put the, the, the fucking deal together, even deeper than it goes on the internet. But if you, even if a dealership says, well, you're getting this car for, for a fucking invoice and you think, great. And then you fucking look up on the internet that the dealer, even when they give a car away at invoice, could be making fucking thousands upon thousands of more dollars. So you think, oh my God, I'm getting a car for invoice. Holy shit. What a deal. And then you get home and I tell you, yeah. That, uh, yeah, they gave you the car for invoice, but the dealer now gets $3,000 cash back because there's $3,000 dealer cash on that car that you could have found out about, you fuck, before you went to the dealership. And there's also $2,000 customer cash. So rather than taking $2,000 off the MSRP, they just basically gave you the customer cash, which they're already getting anyways, and sold you the car for full sticker. You stupid fuck. Can you see what I'm saying? So you have to go armed to, to, to these dealerships knowing if there's any um, incentives that are just going to the dealer because they can pass those on to you. Are there any incentives to the customer that the dealer might not tell you about? You have to go armed with knowledge people or, the, or they're going to fuck you. And even when I've gone up to salespeople and given them my speech, been like, bro, I've done this a million times. I, I know all the tricks. Don't fucking play these fucking games with me. I don't even have to test drive the car. This is what I want to pay. This is what I want for my trade. I've done this a zillion times before. Take this to your fucking sales manager. Hash it out. Come back to me. Done deal. And then they're like, yep, okay, buff. Yep, we'll, yep, we'll fucking do that. And then they're probably walking back to that fucking sale desk like, no, fuck this guy. This guy's going to come in here and say he's been doing this. And this is what we're going to drag him through the coals. And, the, and then they still get me. I Somehow they still, you know what I'm saying? It's like, dude, I just spelt it out for you. I got cash right here, right now. It's not like I'm asking you guys to give away the fucking farm. You guys are still making thousands at this price. Just sign off on it and we're done. And they still want to fuck with me. Even after I approach them and I'm like, dude, don't give me any of that, you know, 
all these stupid link, you know, like, uh, kicking the tires today. You know, this car is you. Oh, you look good in this car. Oh, yeah, that's a great color. Oh, yeah. Da, da, da. Fuck it, dude. Just shut the fuck up. The car will sell itself, bro. You know, I don't need to know how many fucking airbags it has, bro. Or how the Bluetooth works. I get it, okay? I'm not grandma here who doesn't know anything about a car. Or, you, know, you know what I'm saying? And, and I tell these people this from the get-go, and it's like they just forget. Ugh, they drive me nuts. Um, and I would, uh, dude, I tell you, <laughs> one of these days I need to put together, um, and maybe, and maybe get, uh, one of my ex car salesmen's, uh, salespeople buddy, buddies to come on the podcast with me and we'll tell some sales stories. I'll tell you some of my horror stories at dealerships and then, uh, me and my buddy or whoever I pick out to do this, um, can 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 probably come on and give you some great ones, but honest to God, uh, one of the truer things I learned about selling cars is that some of the happiest customers that we had literally paid full sticker price for the car. Isn't that crazy? I specifically remember there was this older dude. Uh, he wasn't older. He was older than me at the time. He, he might have been forty. This was in Western Massachusetts, and. Uh, you know, there's military bases around here, and I think the guy was a military guy. I think, it, you know, late 30s, upper 40s. Guy came in late one week night, you know, just before we closed, and he was uh, he was test driving a Honda Odyssey minivan, and it was one of the EXL, like, touring models. And these think this is like a $40,000 car. And the guy came back, and, uh, you know, what's the price? And the salesman showed him the sticker, you know, MSRP, that's the price. The guy's like, all right, done. The guy didn't even fucking negotiate. He paid full sticker for it. And then the dude came back the fucking couple days later, and he's given everybody, like, U.S. Marine Corps, like, medals as, like, a gift and shit. Like, the guy was so fucking cool, and he paid full sticker. Didn't haggle, nothing. And you know what? I guess I would do the same thing, too. I think the guy actually, like, had to finance it, though. I think he had to finance, like, everything. I think he had, like, a $600-something a month payment, too, which is awful. Ugh. I had a $600 payment on a car once when I was making uh, decent... Well, fuck, I'm making more money now than I was then, but I still shouldn't have had a $600 car payment. That was ridiculous. That's when I was young and stupid. And this is the other dilemma that I come to, talking about being young and stupid, but now I'm supposed to be old and smart. Well, yeah, I have a lot of life experience, but I went through life um, as a young man in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, and uh, me and a bunch of people recently, uh, I was with a handful of friends last night having a glass of wine discussing this exact topic. I'm like, okay, we're all about 40 years old, and when we look at like today's youth, uh, there's a lot of things that we scratch our head at. And, you know, we think the youth is, like, doomed. Like, we're looking at this youth like, holy shit. But, you know, is it really the youth? Is that strange? Or are we just old now? And that's a great, you know, thing, you know, because think about it. You know, I even asked my father, I'm like, Pops, when you were 40 and I was 20 or how, or 15, however old you were and I was, did you look at our generation and just shake your head like, man, this generation is doomed? And he's like, well, yeah, kind of, you know, things were different, you know. Uh, he was in his 20s and the 60s during the height of Vietnam and the hippie era and when, you know, drugs became really popular and shit. The 60s were a crazy fucking time, right? And uh, so, yeah, you know, you really have to turn the mirror around on yourself, which is something I need to do a lot more, especially when I'm on the stage. Um, I need to freestyle a lot more, like I do on this podcast. I literally, I only have the subjects written down. If you were, if if I would, eventually I'm going to do this podcast so it not only gets uploaded to the audio, but I'm going to do the live video too. But um, I need to wait until I become better looking because I think I'll break the camera. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, um, if I could show you the list, I I like you know I talked I talked about Trump at the Daytona 500, right? Do you think everything I talked about about Trump, whether you found it funny or not, was it scripted out? No, I literally just have Trump Daytona 500 written down, just the topic. 
So let's say I was going to talk about Trump at the Daytona 500 at an open mic tonight or at a show tonight, if I did have a show tonight, you know, you just, you just, you just, you just have to riff. You have to go off the top of your head. And I'm pretty good at going off the top of my head because I'm just, my head is just filled with nonsense. It's filled with bullshit. And uh, yeah, that's why they say, you know, everyone's got an opinion and they all suck, right? No, that's not what this is. that how the saying goes? Everybody has an opinion and they all suck. No, it's every, everybody's got an asshole and they all stink. Wait a minute. How does fuck does that saying work? I hope you're laughing right now at how ridiculous I am. How does that saying go? I know you guys know what fucking saying I'm talking about. Um, everybody's opinion stinks like an asshole. I swear to God, I am not doing this to be funny. Um, opinions. Okay. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one and they all stink. But I disagree with that. You know, we automatically think that because poop comes out of an asshole that it would stink. And I bet you most assholes do stink. I've never smelt an asshole, but my nose has definitely been near an asshole. Uh, you know, prime example. If you don't... You, there's probably some pretty... Uh, okay. If, if, if there's any adults listening, and I'm sure there are... Right? Even if I'm the only one listening to my podcast. If you've ever done a 69 position, you know that your nose is pretty much right in... For, well, for me, your nose is right next to the woman's, uh, you know, butthole. And I can tell you that, uh, you know, not all buttholes stink. You know, your nose is right there. As long as they recently showered and didn't poo, um, it's probably pretty clean. All right? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but God's honest truth. When my girlfriend's coming over, I take a shower, right? We all do. And you know what drives me nuts is, uh, you know, the most important... Okay, like, let's say, like, today. Today, I'm obviously doing uh, a show during the day, and I'm not at work, right? Right. So, have I showered yet today? No. I'm here. I'm, I'm home alone. Am I going to shower? Yes. But I'm also going to poop. And when I have my girl over later, I want to be able to poop and then shower because I don't want none of my body to be stinking. But how many times I know everybody out there can relate to this, that you got your significant other or your partner, right? I got to start saying partner because I can't just assume that all of my listeners are heterosexual, right? I want to be all inclusive. I love all of you. I really do. Um, but anyways, yeah. You know, everybody's been there. You want to be fresh and clean for your partner, so you take a shower, and then you get out of the shower, and up, you got to poo, right? It's happened to all of us. It has, and it's embarrassing, and it's like, man, that, that urge couldn't have come like 20 minutes ago, you know? I've had to get right back in the shower again because I wanted to be completely smelling good all over the place. So if we did end up in some kind of precarious position... There's no chances of any smells, right? Because, guys, come on, or, or women, you don't want to be embarrassed and smell anywhere when you get intimate, right? So it's important. You know, it's a little easier now because they got those wet wipes. You know the wet wipes. If you guys don't use wet wipes after you poo now, you guys are missing out. I'm telling you. H have I ever told this on the podcast? I probably have. You know, you, you go to KFC or you go somewhere where they got greasy food and they give you a wet napkin, right? Because the dry napkins, you can keep wiping your face so that pizza grease, that fat fucking greasy just fucking stain all over your fucking beard and your face and you're, and you're wiping it, you know? But then they bring you out this like moist towelette. And you really feel just like you just got out of the shower. You've gotten all that grease and shit off. It's no different with your ass. You know? I mean, I know we, you know, every time you might poo, you know, you might have to use, sometimes, you know, the poo comes out and it's real soft and you, and you have to go through a whole roll of toilet paper, right? Because I don't know about you people. I mean, I've never talked about wiping techniques with another human being, but I wipe until there's no more stain and then I know it's gone. And then I go to the wet wipes, right? It's like taking, it's like, it, if you can't shower after you take a poo 
you use the wet wipe. It's just like using the wet nap after you've had some greasy food. It's, it's refreshing. It leaves your ass feeling refreshed after you poo. So if you don't know about these, run out there and get them. You, you can pick them up at the grocery store. You can probably pick them up at your local 7-Eleven. So if you've never tried to use a wet wipe to wipe your ass, and, I, and I'm not saying you got to go to the KFC drive through bro. They sell them in a store. They're marketed now specifically for your butthole. But they are expensive. I wouldn't recommend wiping from start to finish with them. But once you're done with the toilet paper, if you want to feel extra fresh down there, then you go to the wet wipes. It's, you know, and I'm telling you, it works out perfectly. All right. That's about all the horse shit that I have for you today. I will do another podcast later this week, I promise you, unless something horrific happens. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying, uh, you know, anything horrific well i don't fucking know see i don't know how to end these podcasts this is why i like having a co-host like the other fucking show i did with mark you know mark needs to he's 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 literally halfway out the door with the fucking headphone monitor still on and i'm like he's like uh uh yeah we'll see you on the flip side and then i'm like yeah we'll see you on the flip side bye-bye you know what i'm saying Every time I go to end a podcast i end up rambling about fucking nonsense for 20 more minutes so okay Let's wrap it up, okay? I hope you guys have had a good of a time listening to my horseshit I've, uh, as I've had saying it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting me. I do love every single one of you. Uh, and yes, see, here I go again. I was just giving the kisses, and I'm thinking there's probably straight dudes out there thinking that's so gay, and I'm like, no, it ain't. You got to be a little bit more progressive and tolerant, okay? This show is for everybody, all right? I love you all. Thank you for listening. Uh, We will talk to you on the flip side. Bye-bye. All right, that's it, everyone. Nothing to see here. Just some people who are really, really high. Aww. Aww. Can't shoot anyone.